But the working boats of years ago were less pristine, and their nomadic and illiterate crews were viewed with suspicion by rich country landowners. The last thing they wanted was a canal crossing their land. In some ways, not a lot has changed. There are now plans to reopen the disused Cotswolds Canal. For years it's been filled in along much of its route, and farmers can drive across it. Just like the landowners of two centuries ago, they don't want the canal. It's a, an embuggerance. It goes right way through the middle of my farm, neatly, completely dividing it in two, so that moving big machinery, combine harvesters, that sort of thing, will be extremely difficult. I, I expect that um, um, any, anybody who uh, proposes to uh, develop the canal will have to put in a bridge or two. But at the moment, we've, we've got um, about 13 places where we actually cross the canal. But, I, there's no way they're going to put in that number of bridges. Dozens of bridges once spanned the old canal along its route from Saul Junction to the Thames at Lechlade, but they're not there now. And some 80 landowners have formed an action committee objecting to the canal severing their land. About a quarter of our garden would be taken. At the present time, our house can only be approached from the front, which means it's quite easy to make it secure. There's no access from the rear. If the canal were to go through, that would go, so security would go instantly. There's an equally passionate case put forward by those who want the Cotswolds Canal, one of the most scenic in Britain, reopened for boats. What we're actually recreating here is, an, is a link that once existed. I think it will bring a tremendous amount of economic benefits. I mean, if, uh, if I took you into Stroud, I could uh, point you to many uh, areas which are what you would say run down and need uh, sensitive redevelopment to bring vitality and prosperity back to that once uh, great mill town. I cannot see. Uh, where these benefits are going to come from. A barge owner doesn't want a hotel because he carries his bed with him. He doesn't want a restaurant because he cooks on his barge. Uh, the only thing he may want uh, is a pub, but there are no pubs on the bank of the canal. The waterway also cuts through villages. Thirty years ago, David Wilson created his garden by filling in the quagmire that was once the canal. We've been here since 1971. My wife is now 76, I'm 72. And I think we thought that we would see our days out here. If they bring the canal through, uh, it'll take most of this land anyway. And uh, I don't know that I could, I could bear to be here while they um, dug it all out. I probably would be sad if somebody wanted to build a motorway through my back garden, but this is not going to be a motorway, it's a waterway. History tells us that uh, a waterside premises, its value rises immediately, and the waterway is open. It's like German propaganda mm. during the war. Keep telling them it's good enough and they'll probably believe it at the end of the day. Mm. But if you look behind it, uh, it's on no substance Terrible whatever. Thought. Eventually, people do see, if you like, the sense and they do see the benefits, and they do recognise the advantage to them as individuals and to their community. We will oppose it in, in any way we can, I'm sure. The project would cost £83 million. Pounds. If history repeats itself, maybe there's room for compromise. Landowners of 200 years ago wanted compensation, or, as at Tixall in Staffordshire, an expensive water feature. Well, back in 1766, this particular stretch of land was owned by a Sir Thomas Clifford, a real truculent landowner. A decision was made that he would allow the canal to be built through his land, providing uh, they introduced Capability Brown to landscape the area, and the wide itself to be dug through uh, to just over 100 metres in uh, width. And Sir Thomas Clifford's cussedness at the time has produced this beautiful tourist attraction. <laughs> 